Hello, I've been digging through a lot of my old magazines. This is 1979 and on the cover there, there's a 16 note sequencer. I thought, what a brilliant little project to sit down and actually make and probably do a video. Until you kind of look at all the components needed to do that. A box, uh, all the pots and everything. And well, you know, there's just part one of the uh, instruction manual of putting this thing together. And there's certainly no MIDI. And there's certainly no USB, not from 1979. And I thought, well, what's the point? You can just get a Korg SQ1. This has got CV and gate A, CV and gate B. It's got an output for all the little bits. And it's also got a sort of sync in and out that will go with all your Volker stuff. Plus MIDI, plus USB, plus it'll even do Hertz to volts, which can be useful for some of the old gear if you've got it. And I kind of thought, if this is under £80, how can they make that? Steel construction? Everything looks fine from the outside. Uh, surely there's no profit in this at all. So that's my little excuse to open it up. OK, let's see what we need here. 16 integrated circuits, 21 potentiometers, two more switches, 100 resistors and capacitors and things. Never mind the circuit board and the steel box. And also here, construction details and using the sequencer next month. So that would be April 1979. Well, I'm afraid my time machine doesn't work. So, yeah, anyway, this is, like I say, it's a nice solid steel construction. Uh, even comes with its uh, batteries in the box. So, Let's have a look inside here. If it wasn't for the battery compartment, they could have actually made this um, about two thirds of the thickness, maybe even half of the thickness. There's nothing really to see on the back of the board here. Aha, here we go. This brown board here will probably be just uh, a few push buttons on the front. Right, let's see. You're going to come up? Thank you. I don't know why this one's separate. Why is that one separate? Oh. I think what I'll do with that is actually put that in the box the right way around. There you go. That way I'm not going to forget it. I have put something together in the past, taken ages and then realised there's another piece sitting on my desk and then you have to take it all apart again and it's really, really annoying. So this is the switch gear and like I say, here's the carbon tracks. Uh, they've got a little transistor at the top, or is that a diode? It looks like a little diode there. And then there's a light emitting diode just underneath and that will light up the push buttons. I'm intrigued how the little pots work though. These beautiful little glass sort of perspex pots here and they have a clear shaft. So underneath each one of these is going to be another LED so it actually shines through the plastic shaft. And I think that's a really nice, nice little idea. But it looks to me there's only two Ooh, maybe three. There's three microchips on this board. So I'm going to have to just zoom the camera in and we'll have a look what they are. So on board here we have three microchips and uh, let's start with this one. This is a, a JRC which is Japan Radio Corporation and that's a 4558. That's a dual operational amplifier there. Now you could buy 20 of those for a pound on eBay so that's 5p each. And these are found in many guitar effect pedals such as uh, preamp overdrives, the Boss OD1, the Ibanez Tube Screamer, lots of DIY stomp boxes. Uh, but this has many other uses in non-musical electronics as well. Though I'm not absolutely sure what it's doing in this circuit here. Now <clears throat> up here there's a Analog Solutions L7Z. At first I thought that was a digital to analog converter, but judging by where it is, 
uh, you've got a capacitor there and you've got an inductor there and the power runs just underneath it here. That's most likely a DC-DC switching converter. I mean, this thing takes two pencil batteries, three volts, and you can switch it up to eight volt output. So, yeah, a little bit of magic going off in there. That's got to be a DC-DC switching converter. Now, the main chip here is the ARM FM3. That's a 32-bit ARM core microcontroller, and that's got embedded flash memory on there, and it also has all the USB control. That's why there's no chip for the USB. It's working directly from here. Those I found for approximately £3.56. But other than that, uh, just transistors, resistors, capacitors, uh, these rather nice little potentiometers, uh, jack plugs, and nice switch here, and a 4 meg crystal. Uh, yeah, I think there's probably a little bit of room for profit there. Not a lot, but I think Korg has done really well with this and kept the price down to a, a very reasonable amount for people. There's some bits here on the board that says uh, CV range, etc., but I, I don't really think they're solder points for people who want to uh, hack into this. But anyway, uh, there you go. That's the inside of the Korg SQ-1. Very nice. I'll put the lid back on now. I've connected a few of the jack plugs up to the oscilloscope here to sort of try and show you what's going on with CV and gate, etc. Uh, the blue line here is the sync out, and that's basically a sort of a tempo. That'll change depending on the speed of the tempo that you set up on the SQ-1. And you can send that out to drum machines and all sorts of gear. So that's, yeah, that's basically just your tempo. Now the green line here, that comes on and off, on and off, on and off. And that is the gate output. What that is basically doing is telling a keyboard or synthesizer that the note is pressed down and the note is released. Now the yellow stepping here, that's actually the pitch CV, the pitch control voltage. And as you can see here, these are the different sort of keys that will be played on a keyboard, depending on where I've got the little potentiometer set in the stepping of the SQ1 step sequencer. So if I run that a moment, you'll see the stepping of the uh, different notes that would be played depending on the potentiometers and where I've got these set. So if I twiddle a few of these around, there you go, it sort of, well, it changes the sequence of the notes that are going to be played on a synthesizer. So let me uh, hook up a synthesizer on here and we'll see how terrible that sounds. This is all plugged in now. The gate is what's going to tell the keyboard when to gate on and off the uh, key key on key off type of thing and the CV is the control voltage and that will tell the uh, synthesizer which key to play or which tone to play so uh, I've got this sort of just randomly set up so don't expect anything too musical out of this but let's have a listen There you go. That was just a quick listen to the uh, strange composition that I've randomly just made up on this thing. Yeah, so it's a great little gadget. Uh, I can see Korg is not making a heck of a lot out of this, but it, it's a very useful little tool to have if you've got some of the Euro rack gear or some of the uh, old analog gear that accepts CV and gate inputs and things, because this will also convert uh, USB instructions from your computer into control voltages. So it's also useful just as a, a sort of a converter to sit between a modern computer and an old CV and gate synthesizer. So I hope that's been useful to you and uh, thanks very much for watching. 
If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up because it does help in the searches and I'm going to find something else to take apart now. Thanks very much for watching. All the best.